let's go into tasks and make sure you know how to create alarms, but then more importantly, how to use those alarms. So here I am in Outlook. I'm just going to right click in my task window and choose new task. You create the task like you normally would. I'm just going to call this alarm and I'm going to capitalize it so I can find it easily. Alarm example. And then you set it up anything and everything you need, whether you have a recurrence, no matter what you might need on here, but be sure you turn on the reminder because the reminder is what creates the alarm. So I want to set mine to happen in just a few moments. So it's in the afternoon and it's approximately right now, it's approximately 1.25. Whoops, let me go back to 1 o'clock. Here we go. Well, let's just choose 1.30. But it's about 1.25 right now. So what I want to do is I want to change this from 1.30. I want to change it to 1.26. So at 1.26, this alarm goes off. So let me click on Save and Close. And now there is my task right there. And at 1.26, the alarm is going to go off. This is whenever you set the alarm. Maybe you set it for a year from now to pop up two days before the event. Maybe you set it for... Friday and first thing Friday morning at 8 o'clock, you want the alarm. Maybe it's 15 minutes before every meeting. It really doesn't matter what the alarm is set for. When that time hits your computer, the alarm will pop on. Now, what happens if you don't have Outlook open? Well, it won't pop on if you don't have Outlook open. But when you open Outlook the next time, it will open a dialog box that tells you that you missed an alarm. Whoop. Did you hear it? There's my alarm. So one reminder, and it's going to tell you the name of the task. Mine says alarm example, or this may be the name of the email because this is for anywhere that you set the alarm, any reminder that you set. And it said, I set it for 1.26 p.m. on Wednesday the 21st, and it says, hey, take care of this now. This is just the task. It's called alarm example, and it's listed. Well, you could be done. You could say dismiss this. Hmm, why does it have dismiss all? It has dismiss all in the event that you have multiple alarms coming up. And the reality is you might have multiple alarms. But here's the reason that I wanted to do this lesson. The snooze. Click the snooze to remind yourself and you can tell it how long you would like to pause the reminder. So you can use any of these defaults. Now I can choose five minutes, but I can change that five to say one. So then in one minute, this goes off again. So what I like to do is set my alarms a little earlier than I really need, and then I like to snooze. But some people are like, no, be done with it and dismiss it. So let's snooze this for one minute. So now this alarm is going to go off again in one minute. You can continue to utilize your alarms this way. You can continue to snooze those alarms and work with those alarms. And you can have multiple alarms set. Now I also want you to see that in the columns here, there's not an option for seeing when the alarm goes off, but the alarm is always set. Let me double click on this one. The alarm is always set inside the message, the contact, whatever it might be. For me, for this one, it's for the task and it's called a reminder. So be sure that you use your reminder. Now while we're in this reminder, I also want to talk about this button right here. The button allows you to change the sound. So I, by default, have a sound that came installed with Outlook, but you could choose a different sound if you have different sounds. You just click on Browse, and then you have to have those sounds, so then you could create a totally different sound if you would like to. Oh, did you hear it? I can't see it right now, but I just heard that alarm go off. So let me click on Cancel to dismiss this sound and Cancel to dismiss. And I just want to close this particular message or this task. Let me click on Close and No, I don't want to save any changes. And hey, where'd my message go? Well, let me minimize Outlook. And when I minimize Outlook, hmm, what happened to it? Well, here's what happened. It popped up in a window behind where I was. And so since it popped up behind and I minimized everything, I wasn't able to see it. But here's what would happen if you had Outlook minimized and you were in Word or Excel or PowerPoint or something else, it would pop up like this on your screen. You can move this also. You could just leave it sitting on your screen if you would like to and continue working on whatever task you have at hand. You can't resize these, but you can minimize. When it's minimized, you can pop back in here and you can maximize it. And you could just close it from here also without dismissing things. Now you'll notice that it's starting to tell me that I'm overdue. I'm two minutes overdue with this particular action, and that's because I snoozed it and I told it to snooze for one minute. So I can continue to snooze, or I'm going to go ahead and hit dismiss and dismiss that alarm. So now you can see that any of your tasks can be assigned an alarm, and the benefit is you won't forget. So Bert, 
For Bert Reese, I really have to call Bert by Friday afternoon. Every Friday by 4 o'clock, I have to have Bert called. So don't you think it's a good idea to pop into this particular message and be sure to turn a reminder on that says, don't forget, by Friday at 4 p.m. or maybe 3.30 p.m. that I ensure that I call Bert? Mm -hmm. I think so. So use those reminders. They're often called alarms. Use the snooze feature if, it's beho if it behooves you to use that. Some people say, no, just I don't want to do that. I'll just take care of the activity when it happens. Regardless, now you know how to use those alarms. So use them wisely. We hope you enjoyed this preview video. Please click on the like button below if you did and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Be sure to visit us at www.kalliance.com to sign up for your free seven-day trial today. You could learn a lot in a week.